Hey, it's me, Chris, again, back with some more thoughts about optimism. So yesterday I talked a little bit and, and kept it really basic uh, in regards to this interplay between emotions and the rational part of your brain that, that does all the thinking, okay? And um, now I want to get a little bit more in-depth as we talk about the thinking part of your brain because... Um, as this has been researched, um, the, you know, nerdy back term for, um, how those thoughts that you're having is, uh, called explanatory style. We used to call it attributional style. And all that means is attributional style meant, you know, this event happens to what do you attribute it to? And then eventually... It was replaced with explanatory style, which is an event happened, and how do you explain that event to yourself? And there's three basic categories of um, thoughts that you might have about a particular event. And I want to just get through uh, the first one of them, and that is all about uh, time. So... Um, when an event happens, you will make an explanation to yourself about how likely that event is to happen again in the future or an event like it, right? So there are things that happen that are dramatically um, emotionally impactful for us. For instance, like right now, um, again, this is March 17th, 2020, we're all dealing with a uh, health crisis that is unlike anything we've ever seen. And, um, you know, uh, if, if you're having a strong emotional reaction to that, uh, this sort of first category of thoughts, um, people can get hung up on thinking that it's all about a specific event happening again. Um, and it's more like, will there be a uh, big international crisis that in many ways and many aspects of it are well beyond my control right um and so if this event is pretty upsetting to you or, or elicits negative emotions which in all likelihood it is um then the the optimistic response um would be to uh, think that it was unlikely to happen again. A pessimistic response would be uh, thinking it's very likely to happen again. And that's actually something that's really interesting about optimism is that we tend to think of optimism good, pessimism bad. There are actually many situations in which pessimism is very, very useful. Um, and for instance, I would like uh, the... Uh, directors of the World Health Organization or the CDC to be extremely pessimistic about what's going to happen if we don't get the situation under control. Um, I would like, I want pessimistic firefighters to come if my house is on fire. I want them to be thinking, if we don't do everything we can to stop this fire, the whole place will burn down. Okay, so there are actually many, many situations. Um, so if you're thinking a lot of pessimistic thoughts right now in this moment, um, it, it's actually in some ways can be very useful to you. Um, but in more sort of banal, commonplace sports situations, you don't want to be thinking about um, uh, things that make you really upset happening over and over again in terms of like, you know, I had a bad, I had a bad race and now all my races are bad. Okay. Um, that's when Pessimism is not very useful, right? It's not very useful to be um, so realistic about that kind of stuff because it's actually an impediment to you feeling some hope and uh, clarity that, you know, things can, things can get better. Um, all right, in the next uh, couple videos, I'll go through the other two categories of thought in regards to optimism. But if you've started on the first one, Start to think a little bit about some events that are happening in your life. What is your emotional response to them? 
And when you think about them, how likely do you think events, uh, these events or events like them are to happen again in the future? Until then, see you guys soon.